everyone and welcome back to We Talk Cricket with the Cricket World Cup T20 that is coming closer and closer and getting ready to start. Teams are wrapping up their preparation and hey, this Tri-Nation series between Netherlands, Scotland and Ireland are only one of the few that we get to talk about and we get to cover. So without further ado, let's jump into it. The first match of this Tri-Nation series between these three sides kicked off with a great start, especially for the Netherlands as they were able to walk away comfortable winners versus Scotland. We had Netherlands batting first, posting 167 for 8 off of their 20 overs with Michael Levitt picking, making sorry, 43, a brilliant 43, especially in circumstances, and receiving some good support from Vikram Singh, who made 39, and also Max O'Doy, who made 30. Bowling for Scotland, we did have Gavin Main and Chris Soul both picking up two wickets. Now let's talk a little bit about pros and cons, especially right now for batting. Netherlands right now have they, they do have some solid opening partnerships going. Singh and O'Doy definitely can put runs on the board when necessary. The only thing I'm a little worried about is when they get starts, they don't carry on. Like making 30 and 39 is great, but they should be making 50 plus if they're already posting 50 run partnerships. Just something that I've seen, especially, this is something we've seen since the World Cup. So maybe like, their, their opening relationship is great. You just gotta chuck it a little further. Something to work on. Definitely some good pros there for them, okay? Con-wise, like I said, they really need people who can still push on and get the runs. Don't wait down the order till somebody like Level can, can come in and push. Push from the top, because if you push from the top, that means you have wickets to spare, and you can be able to take more chances going down when you look for runs. Calculated risk, nonetheless, but still, you can take your chances. Now, Scotland in reply, were bundled out for 126. Yeah, not what I expected, especially from size that went through and beat a lot of top nations. But, you know, it, it's, it's a preparation tournament. Things to work on, right? We had Matthew Cross, top scoring with 49, leading the charge and fight for Scotland. And receiving some good support from Richie Barrington, who made 39. As Scotland fell just, okay, I say just, but they fell short by a lot in reaching this total. I definitely thought I could have put up a more fight and at least get the 150. Didn't happen, but at least we did see some fight in them and that they were there trying their best to pull off a result, at least a positive result for themselves. Bowling for the Netherlands, we did have Vivian Kingma picking up 4 for 21 and a great spell of bowling from him. Led from the front as he put the Scotties on the back foot and said, hey, unless you come to play and attack, there ain't no way you getting out of this match with a victory, okay? He did receive some good support from Logan Van Beek, who picked up three for 18, and also newcomer Daniel Dorham, who picked up two for 35, as the Netherlands were able to start their campaign with a victory, and a solid victory that, especially thinking that the World Cup is starting real soon, June 1st. Hey, it's all, we're like already almost midway through, through May, so like, seriously, what a better win and what a better start. Now, Scotland, definitely for me, I definitely think you gotta work on your batting and bowling all around because you're you're not pressuring the your opposing team enough. You need to put them on the back foot. You need to let them know that hey, you are here to play and don't me don't muck around. Like attack the bowlers when you get the opportunity. I'm not saying give your wickets away. I'm saying attack with calculated risk. Say, hey, all right, let's go now. Let's take on the first six over. Let's put them under pressure. Because with you doing that, you're, you are able to dictate where the game can and will go instead of taking whatever they, they shout to you. Huh? Bowling-wise, you still struggled a lot. Honestly speaking, you should have been able to restrict the Netherlands to a lower so total, probably like 140. Didn't happen. But hey, learn from your mistakes, continue to improve, and go forward. Netherlands, bowling-wise, and bad ones, you did a great, great performance all around. So well done to you. Nothing more you can really take away from this game other than keep improving, keep trying your best. Anyway, let us know in the comments below what do you think the Scottish could have done better in order to come out victors of this game and what can Netherlands continue to do to improve. Because hey, you know we're going to have to talk about it. Where else, my peeps? But right here on We Talk Cricket, where you always get a fast perspective of the perspective of this beautiful game. And I'll catch you next time so we can talk some more. Later!